I thrifted this bowl a while back and I went ahead and painted the middle of it a white chalk paint and I added a sawtooth hanger on the back. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I was starting to prep uh, several items to use in upcycles. So I just painted all a bunch of them together and put them up for use for future projects. So I'm starting out with this recycled treasures or recycled decoupage paper called Halloween Masterboard. Now I think this is something that you could use throughout the year for dark academia or dark and moody. I'm choosing the phrenology artwork with the uh, moth on the front of it. I think it is just gorgeous and can mean a lot of different things depending on what you interpret it as. So since this is not going to fit the whole piece, we're going to piece some of this together and you'll see how I do that coming up. I'm going to be using some paint couture decoupage medium. I'm trying to finish up using some things that are getting close to the bottom, so I'm going to be using it. It is a great medium for decoupage. Don't hesitate to purchase it. You can get these products at Aunt Bee's Attic. I'll have the link in the description box below. I do get a small percentage to help pay for products that I use in my videos. Now don't forget I am carrying the DIY paint line and these recycled papers in both of my antique booths in Hickory, North Carolina and Hudson, North Carolina. I did go ahead and spray the decoupage paper. I found that it really helps reduce the wrinkles. Now, I don't mind some wrinkles. I think that just gives it a nice aged look and the handmade look, but it, I would prefer some wrinkles um, or some smoothness over all wrinkles. I'm just using that decoupage medium to cover the whole um, area that I'm gonna be laying this down. And then I'm gonna smooth it out really well with either my hand being very careful or a piece of um, saran wrap or just a little plastic baggie I have right here near me to help keep that from tearing as I smooth it. All right, so once this dries, I'm gonna go ahead and sand these edges off. I'm not sure why I didn't just piece that together, let it dry and then sand the edges off. But anyways, now we are gonna piece those edges together. And I just took some of that same paper and tore off some pieces that was inconspicuous to the whole artwork of it. And now I'm just doing the same process. Once I got all those sides uh, filled in and sanded, I went ahead and put a clear coat of polyacrylic gloss on here just to give it a little bit of sheen. And this piece is done. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you like this piece. Do you think this is more Halloween or is this more of a dark and moody academia style? Now this next project is definitely more leaning towards Halloween. I really wanted to do something with this castle wood piece from or creepy Halloween Manor from Dollar Tree and I thought what would be really cool is if I could put something behind it and turn it into like a curio box. So what I decided was I went in my stash and found this wood divider tray that I've had for a while and we're going to marry these two pieces together. The idea is this is like a witch's lair or castle and it just is going to have some things peeking out to show what could possibly be inside of her castle. So the, as the pieces of the box that are open, or not pieces, but as the parts of the box that are open, I'm going to fill those with things that a witch might have in her castle. And then we'll end up closing it up more as we get towards the bottom. So I started off with that black chalk paint and decided that I'm going to put this Dixie Belle Sea Spray. It's similar to salt wash, I'm assuming, but I wanted to use it. I haven't used it before just to see what the texture was like compared to salt wash. I feel like they're very similar. So I did use a lot of this and a little bit of the paint because I wanted huge texture that would give some crack, crackle, <laughs> and make this look more of a decrepit castle than just a painted piece of wood. So I started going over this with just brushing it on and then I started getting large clumps and amounts on my brush and just slathering it on versus brushing it 
because if you just brush it then the extra will brush off with your brush and I wanted to leave that extra on so I kind of flattened my brush out a little bit to get it how the texture on it that I wanted. I was thinking how nice it would be if this had a different style of texture other than just what I used with my brush. So I was remembering this little cheap wood stamp crackle that I had and I thought you know what I'm just going to stamp in the paint while it's wet. I don't know if that's a thing. I've never seen it done. I'm sure it's been done but it really, I guess it's no different than using a stamp in wet clay to give it a texture. So we just did it with the paint and spray mix. I wanted to mention that I got that sea spray from Dixie Belle for $6 a bag. It was someone that was going out of business and I bought both bags that she had. And like I said, it's similar to the salt wash. I, I feel like they could, you know, go hand in hand. And it's definitely worth the $6. Obviously, I'm not sure how much that stuff is a bag full price, but... Probably at full price, it's worth it too, um, just because I like the product. Now I'm going to let this, once I finish it, I'm going to let this dry very well before moving on to anything to do with it. But we are going to move on to the box itself. We're going to go ahead and move on to the sides and the top and bottom. I think the bottom too of this box. Um, yeah, the bottom, because this is going to be made to hang on a wall. I mean, it can set up too. I go ahead and do the same thing. I use the stamp and the mixture to do the sides of this box and I think around the edges for now. There are many things you can use for a curio box like this. I love Tim Holtz products. I have quite a few of them, especially for my junk journal and crafting, paper crafting days, vignette days. So I pulled out my Halloween stuff and we're just going to use some of the pieces from this. We're going to use paper, we're going to use metal, we're going to use wood. Whatever I feel like looks good is what's going in these boxes. So to begin with, we're going to make sure that the top two boxes, which are going to be seen the most, have a cool vignette that might be in or near a witch's castle. I have this wallpaper by Tim Holtz. It is very vintage, grungy, and has kind of a dark and moody style to it. That's what's gonna be the background of each one of these boxes. I will try to link some of these on Amazon in the description box below. You can get this stuff at a Cherry on Top, which is a website. You can get them at Simon Says Stamp, which is also a website. And then another one that I like to use is Craft. Oh my gosh, I can't think, but I'll put them in the description box below. I thought you guys would enjoy seeing these wallpapers. Aren't they just so yummy? Now that I've picked out the wallpapers that I want for each box, I went ahead and just cut them. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some hot glue. I was gonna use my um, three-in-one glue, but it was clogged, so we're just gonna use hot glue, it's fine. It'll work um, because there's going to be a lot of other things glued in and around this. It's not going to go anywhere. I love the look of these wallpapers. They give you a great base to start out with with a project like this. To start out with, I printed off some free online pictures uh, or photos of witches or digitals. And I'm just trying to decide what frame I want to use around them. I have a few small ones, metal ones, wood ones, plaster ones. And I settled with this one. I went ahead and painted it with that black paint. Now I'm going to use some of my uh, Finnebear waxes around this frame to give it that kind of vintage look. I end up putting some gold on this later on. I want to tell you all, I will not be going into grand detail like this box really deserves because it was a lot. It's a lot of film. It's a lot of time. I'm not saying days or anything like that, but, you know, it did take some time. And I worked on it over some time of days, but not all day, just a little bit here and there. So if you do have questions, just leave them in the comments and just know that I cut out a lot of the footage to save you guys from having to watch it. I know I do get people that enjoy the really long videos, but I want to make sure that my videos are not so long as people dread them, but I also want to make them long enough that people get a chance to enjoy them. You know, let me know in the comments below. Is it a happy medium or would you like longer videos? And I do talk fast and I do speed up these videos. You can change the settings on your videos and watch them slower. I tend to watch everything on 1.25 when I'm watching YouTube. Some people are naturally slower when they talk and they work and I'll watch them on one and a half. That's just me. I'm a very fast person when it comes to things. So again, you can change your settings 
on YouTube if you feel like you need to watch things slower. Don't hesitate. So what I just did there was I saved this large piece of thick acetate, which is basically clear plastic, from a knife packaging that I got for Christmas one year because I knew I would need it. And, you know, to give it that glass look, I just cut out some of that and I'm just going to glue it onto my piece of wood um, and then glue my photo on top of the piece of acetate, then glue the whole piece to the wall. I'm not attaching everything at first. I'm just trying to get pieces together of what I think that I might want this vignette to look like. This is a little wood barrel. Well, it's a full wood barrel and I painted it with that black paint. We're going to turn this into a cauldron and I'm going to add some bubbles on top, but I didn't want to waste a lot of beads or bubbles. So I went ahead and put some saran wrap or part of a plastic packaging, hot glued that and stuck it down on the bottom. I wanted it to be clear so that you couldn't see through the bubbles and see, you know, something that wasn't clear. Anyways, um, this first box in this curio is going to be really what the witch would use. Things she might have in her main sitting room, including her cauldron. Now, I think Dollar Tree and places have miniature cauldrons, but I was trying to use what I have. You see, I have a lot of junk and I need to use it. So I just turned this one into a wood cauldron, which is not your typical. It should be technically cast iron, but you know. All right, so the little balls that I'm getting ready to use are also part of Tim Holtz line. I'm not sure what they're called. Again, I'll try to have this linked below. I'm only using hot glue. It's going to work just fine. This is not going to, you know, be anything that's going to sit outside or get reheated. It should be fine uh, just using hot glue. I'm also using the Surebond. It's supposed to be for everything, plastic, wood, metal. So even if it does get different temperatures it shouldn't affect this now i'm just stacking these on top of each other and then we're going to use some alcohol inks which is also another tim holtz ranger product you can use uh, metallic paints for this you can water down paints to make them more clear there's lots of different things you can use magic markers you can use ink you don't have to use exactly what i'm using i'm just showing you here the colors that i'm choosing to use you can also use beads from necklaces and just paint them a solid color to cover up the original color and then add a metallic paint to that and make it look like bubbles. Once I get the green on there, I'm going to go ahead and add some of that metallic gold just to give it a little bit of a shimmery and like a potion look. Uh, I think the green and the gold together will make a great looking like it's potion. We're also going to make sure we drip some of this down the side because this is bubbling over. We, I glued um, a bead on the side to make it look like, again, it was bubbling over. So just drip that down. I do use the green and the gold drip down on the side of the um, little cauldron. We're going to go ahead and attach the cauldron to the center of this room to go ahead and get our base piece to build around. I'm using wood glue and using hot glue as a temporary hold. I do want to tell you my hot glue is on high heat which means the composition of it totally changes on high heat versus the lower and tends to make things stick and stay stuck. I don't know the chemical process behind it, but I am using the high heat. You can see the heat coming off my glue gun and it's very thin. The main thing is, is to be very careful and cautious when using high temp heat guns. I took this broom. It was one of those little 1980s or 90s brooms that you would see attached to a hat and I cut it way down and I dingied it up with some uh, dark wax and now I'm just propping this up in the corner. I cut the bottom so it would look or so it would lean into the corner and not look weird and I'm just using that glue again to keep it attached. So you know a witch has to have skulls and bones around her castle and I'm going to take some of these cool little Tim Holtz skulls he comes out with skulls and pumpkins every year around halloween and i have some from about three years ago i'm just using the wood glue and possibly some hot glue we're going to prop that or sit it right in front of this broom like i said there's just going to be things laying around that a witch might have in her castle i knew when i went to set that little skull up there that it really needed something behind it so i grabbed my green moss i have some of that other um, no that's not it excelsior maybe or the brown moss I just I don't know I it's okay 
So I thought I would use green moss on this because then it looks more like mold, which to me, I think mold would be an awesome addition to a, a witch's lair or castle. So we're going to be using some green moss throughout this project. And it really helped that little skull look like it have something behind it. And then we do put some more of that on this little area. I had pre-made these little books for a previous project a couple years ago and hadn't used them. Tim Holtz has some paper products that comes with these already little books, um, cutouts. And then I just folded up papers and glued them in the center. And I made sure that my stack was kind of off. And I'm just using hot glue and wood glue to put these in the witch's corner because these are her spell books. Now, you can make these so simple on your own. You don't have to have a book cover. You can make your own book cover. Also, there's tons of little printables on Etsy digitals that you can print off for books. Uh, so just look on Etsy. I also had this candle made up. Tim Holtz has candles and candle sticks in his uh, line of, I think it's called... I don't know it's not found objects but he has a line with a lot of this stuff in it i was thinking i wanted to add some potion bottles in here so i thought maybe i would make a shelf to add them to i dug through my wood stuff and i found some of my jingle blocks and that's going to be my shelf i'm going to go ahead and just rub some of that black paint on and kind of give it a stained look and then we're going to glue it using the wood glue and the hot glue right above that candlestick I will tell you, I do have to end up moving this shelf down a little lower to fit my bottles, but it was not that big of a problem because it hadn't dried overnight or anything. Now, we are going to use some bottles that I have pre-made as well, I think, and then we're going to add some labels to some that are not pre-made. So I got out my jar bottles, and yes, I have a problem with these things too. I remember when the Dollar Tree first started carrying these, and I had to have all kinds of them, all sizes. And Tim Holtz has several different lines of them, along with other things, um, other lines. Hobby Lobby has their own brand of them. There's lots of them. You can get them for very cheap. So, like I said, one of these has a label on it. And then I'm getting ready to show you. I purchased a pack of Tim Holtz labels, and I just stuck them to a page, which probably was a mistake. But um, I could see all of them. And now I'm just pulling that out and going through and picking what labels I want to add to my bottles. Although some of these already look old and dingy, I had to be extra and grab my Stays On black ink, which this pad is almost dried up. Stays On is amazing. It doesn't come off once you put it on. And the problem is, though, it's, I think it's alcohol-based or, anyways, it dries out really easy. I really just need to get a new one. You can also buy the ink refills. You can get Stays On ink on Amazon as well. Okay, so I'm just going around these little edges. I'm just my using my 3 one glue, and I'm and adding these on. And as I lay them down on the rounded bottles, I'm bending the sides to make the label stay on there even better. I do apologize. I am out of frame on this when I put the bottles on the shelf. But I use E6000 and a combination with hot glue on the bottoms and the back of the bottles because I want them to, to um, glue to the shelf as well as the back of the wall. Now you can see the bottles glued to the top of that shelf. What I thought I would do is work on the wallpaper itself to help it blend in more with its surroundings. I know it has some like faux water stains on it and some dinginess from the manufacturer, but we're going to add some black wax and some black paint to kind of make the edges of it look all dingy and dirty and like it's been dripping down the wall a little bit. Once I do some other parts of this castle i go ahead and do add some more paint you'll see that um i don't think i do it on camera but i add some more coming up from the bottom later on now we're going to move on to adding some more of this moss kind of around our cauldron because we're going to add some bones in here and we need somewhere for them to be laying now again tim holtz does have bones in his line and they are a little bit smaller than the ones you can get at dollar tree but I'm sure you could make some things from Dollar Tree work for this. I would, if I bought the bones from Dollar Tree, they are larger. So I kind of cut them in half. So only part of it was sticking out. Here's where I go ahead and put some of that black paint or wax to bring it up from the bottom to make it look like, you know, cohesive with the top. Now we are finally going to add our witch photo in here. I thought she looked a little lonely up here. So I remembered having some really tiny photos of witches and a beautiful little, I think this was like plaster frame or maybe it's um, resin. 
and I had painted it black and added some of that uh, bronzing onto it. So we're just going to hang that kind of um, catty corner to this one to give it more of a family feel. Now I'm just putting my castle on there to kind of see where it's lining up with this vignette on the left to see what I need to do to the vignette on the right and maybe the bottom too. I had in mind that this right side needs to be a little graveyard and maybe witches don't have graveyards in their castles, but they might have one outside. I have this Edgar Allan Poe digital kit from my junk journal days. I have an Etsy digital shop online. I'll leave that in the description box below. It's Cozy Artsy Studio. The Edgar Allan Poe digital is in it. What I did was take those two pieces I showed you and I glued them to the front of this headstone that's laying there to the right. Now I'm going to add some of this greenery or this green moss in before I put my headstone in there. I'm also going to add some more of this moss to the other side to make them both cohesive because this one's going to have moss at the top as well. Because this is going to be a little graveyard, I want it to have a fence. So I had these little wood pieces of fence. I picked these up. Uh, we have a Mighty Dollar here in North Carolina and they have a craft supply section. And I bought quite a bit of wood, little wood things from it years ago and just happened to have it in my stash for my fence. I thought that not only would we have a grave, we would have some skeleton parts out here. I remember the movie Poltergeist when they started having the skeleton parts coming up from the pool. Uh, yes, that tells my age, but you know what? That is still a great movie. So I end up taking the heads off these skeletons and just using the torso, kind of catacornering them from each, catacornering them from each other. One, I end up using a wood block uh, from the Dollar Tree just to give it a base. We're going to go ahead and add some more moss around these and get all that cleaned up. I'm adding some more moss around the edge and the top and some flowers. Uh, I did, these were white and I did kind of grunge them up. I ended up uh, using later on some darker flowers on the outside, but I do like that these almost look like they're alive. We're going to go ahead and add some of that paint around the edges of this wallpaper and sort of up on it to make it also look very aged. I really wanted something to go above this grave and when I was looking at the Edgar Allan Poe kit, I saw one of his quotes, so I made this kit. I made lots of digital kit, well not lots, but quite a few digital kits. Uh, and again, they are in my Etsy shop, not my Cozy Junk Studio Etsy shop. I don't have anything on there. That's only for if someone wants to buy something I make on here on this channel. But my Cozy Artsy Studio has all my digitals in it. And again, I'll have that link below. So I put this quote even in the grave, all is not lost. And then I end up grunging around the edges of it and gluing it above the graves grave. So since I kind of went into quite a bit of detail with this, these top two, we are going to speed through a lot of the bottom and the outside of this. Again, if you have questions, just let me know. Right now, I want to make a mummy. I, what I'm going to do is the holes that are in that wood castle, I'm going to fill them with a mummy, a witch, and then windows, an, an owl, and a spider web. So you'll see coming up how I do them. But right now I'm just taking one of these uh, Dollar Tree skeletons and I'm just wrapping it in what's called mummy cloth. I think it's from Tim Holtz. You can get gauze. You can use all kinds of different things. You don't need to buy this. You know, I, I just went through a phase and I have it and I'm going to use it. So we're just going to wrap this around and dingy him up with some inks or maybe some wax and turn him into a little mummy. I do end up having to cut most of his body off except for the head and part of his arms and then the uh, rib cage. I'm just going to make sure he fits perfectly in this window. So I'm taking off his legs and I think I do have to cut some of that bottom off and I'm using hot glue and some of that wood glue to attach him to the back side of my castle. Once I get him in place and stuck down, I'm going to flip it around and again, just try to see how he's looking with the um, base of this castle. 
Now we're going to work on the witch that's going in one of the bottom windows and I'm making a hat for this skeleton. It's going to be a skeleton witch. I'm using some of this very distressed leather. It's a beautiful leather and pattern. I got this at a thrift store. I'm just going to use it to make a little hat for this witch. Our witch also has to have some hair and I figured it might as well look dead and I had these in um, a box of thrifted florals. So we're just going to cut these down and hot glue these to the sides of her head and we're going to hot glue that hat to her head too. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this um, black oxide ink from Tim Holtz and I'm going to, I think it's black, I don't know, black soot maybe. I'm just going to do the edges of this hat and get rid of that white. With the witch, I did the same thing, and I cut her body down and glued her on the back just like the mummy. Here's where I've cut a lot of the steps out moving forward. I used popsicle sticks to make the shutters for this house, and I cut them kind of at an angle so they would look a little bit creepier. I painted them a light gray, and now I'm just using this ink to make them look darker. I also use popsicle sticks and a piece of wood, birch wood from the Dollar Tree to make my door and I'm gluing it on. I painted it the same gray and I put some of that ink on it, including the antique looking ink. If you look at the second to the right down, I went ahead and took one of those Dollar Tree skulls, cut it in half and put it in a frame, kind of like my witch to come out of that side just to get it started. And that's something that I don't have on camera. Now we're going to go ahead and use some of these, I think they're Anna Griffin. Uh, I had some of her paper stuff that I found in a thrift store and these windows, I'm just dingying them up with my oxide inks and that stuff reactivates with water and makes it look like splotchy. So I'm going to go ahead and reactivate that with water and get them cut down and glued on the back of this castle. At this point, we have our witch, our mummy, and I put a card up in the top that had an owl on it. For that window we're going to go ahead and put these faux windows and a piece of spiderweb acetate from the tim holtz line for the very last window we're going to go ahead and use some of this fence that i had in my stash because what is a witch's house without a cute little fence or a creepy little fence we're going to be painting this a rusty color, adding some gray to give it some like spooky shading, and we're going to cut the tips of it to make them look pointy to make it look even more creepy, and then glue them with wood glue and hot glue on the front of this castle. I wanted the shutters to have a little bit more texture, so I thought that I would pull out that stamp that we used on the house and turn it sideways and stamp all of the shutters with it. So it kind of gave them that louver type look. Now we're going to take some of my Finna Bear waxes. I've had these things forever. We're going to be using them all over the front of this to give this some dimension with a little bit of green hint, some of that silver, and some antique. Now that I got that finished, I thought I would pull in some of that rusty color and add it to different areas of the shutter and of the front of this house. Once I get this finished, I'm going to go ahead and pull in that polyacrylic gloss Give this a good coat to get these all blended in. I just want to be honest in. with you all. When I started this project, I was so excited and I felt it was just so much joy. But then the dread came over me and I wanted to quit this project so many times. You have no idea. Comment below and let me know what you think about this project. I know it's quite a bit of footage on here and quite a bit of techniques, but I think in the end it turned out really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and get this finished. What I've done here is I want them to, I want it to look like they're, well, on the left, there's skeleton hands and a head peeking through the wood. And I want what shows to look like there's boarded up parts of the house. Um, because, you know, it gives, it kind of fills in those gaps and then it also gives them more of that creepy factor. I'm just using my drill and some small screws to get this attached to the front. I also put a piece of that Dollar Tree wood down at the bottom to fill in the gap going up and down. The wood I used there was just some popsicle, the larger popsicle sticks. And now on the right side, I'm gonna use these smaller popsicle sticks. This is so when you look at it from the side or the top, 
it's not just open space down in there and looks weird. Plus, like I said, I love the whole boarded up look. I went ahead and left some footage in here that I thought you all might enjoy. I'm just going to play some music. I'm using waxes. I'm using some Dollar Tree florals, some thrifted florals, and um, some more of that moss just to finish the whole project off. And I thought I would let you watch. Again, if you have any questions, just comment below. I did put a sawtooth hanger on the back of this so it can hang or it can stand. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I don't think it photographed very well, but I could be wrong. So let me know in the comments below. This next project was an inspiration from FlamingoToes.com. I found these photos of these faux crystal balls and I thought the Dollar Tree candle or candlesticks would be perfect for this and their uh, domes that they sell. I used a couple different types you can print, so if you go to flamingotoes.com, it will show you to print on clear acetate, but I had these recollection pads, uh, paper pads, that I found a few years ago. I think you can still get these on eBay. So what I did was I cut out a skull and I left part of the bottom of the piece. I didn't cut it all the way out because we're going to be using the base of this skull as our, mm, I'm not sure, anchor maybe? So I left a strip wide enough to prop this up and I will show you how we use that in a second but what I decided to do was get my stays on black ink and just go around the edge of this and the other one of the, I don't think I do the other one to outline it more to show up in the globe. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a slit in that piece on the bottom and we're going to bend the slit, the very bottom of the slit, about a half inch, one way and then the other way so that that forms two pieces of plastic sticking out as a base. I did forget to tell you, so this is the snow globe base that I'm using right now from Dollar Tree. I painted it black, but I left some of the middle without paint so that I could glue my piece to the plastic. And I already attached this to one of the black candle holders from Dollar Tree. I took some of that black paint and I touched this part up and then I just um, put the globe on. You can see how well this is attached here. It worked perfectly. The next piece is the more taller dome and I just used a larger piece for this. And I didn't have to cut a bottom or anything, but because this was rectangle shape, it held very well in the dome itself and then the bottom of it caught on the base of this. I didn't paint anything. I left this just as is and I left the black candle stick as is. You could do more with these. You could put a bow on them. You could paint the plastic. I wanted to leave them kind of plain and uh, this was my inspiration that I made from the flamingotoes.com photos. 
let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, so our next piece is gonna be using some more of recycled papers. You guys, she really hit the nail with these this year. These came out in 2023. Don't forget you can get these at Aunt B's Attic or in my booths, like I said earlier. Now I have painted, pre-painted some jars and some plates and some cans, and I'm just showing you, sit down, relax, paint a bunch of things with a white or cream base that you can use decoupage paper on then you just have to grab them out and get started i went with this dome shape with the skull inside of it to go in the center of the one of the plates i bought a whole stack of these plates for like 2.99 and i knew that i could upcycle them so i just like i said painted some of them and what i did with this one was i didn't put the footage on here because we have seen plenty of decoupaging on this channel i decided to paint the rim of this with that black chalk paint and now i'm just sealing this the whole piece i forgot to tell you after i let that paper that square dry thoroughly i just took my little zip sander and sanded off the edges all the way around and it worked perfect once I sealed the whole piece with that polycrylic gloss, I added some gold rub and buff around the edges and I added some of that black and burlap polka dot bow from Dollar Tree. What do you all think about this one? I love it. Let me know in the comments below. This next project, we're going to go ahead and use another one of those painted pieces that I've got ready. Now you can paint the whole jar on here or your whole can, but I decided I was just going to paint the front piece and add a label to this. That way you could still kind of see through it if you wanted to on the sides. And I felt like this was a, like an apothecary jar versus just painting the whole jar. Once I get this label on, I do have some paint on the sides and you know what, I didn't mind that. What I did was I took either some dark wax or some of that dark ink and went around the edges and dirtied that up. And I love how this turned out. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. We are going to continue on with this recycled masterboard or Halloween masterboard paper. Now, I don't want you guys to think you need to run out and buy this. There are lots of images you can print off online onto tissue paper, even regular paper you can decoupage. It's a little bit thicker, but it will work. And you can buy napkins that has this kind of stuff on it. I'm just giving you ideas and I had this at my fingertips, so I was gonna use it. I love this hand. I think it's great, the diagram of the hand. And so we're gonna put it on this little weird shaped cutting board. It almost looks like a pork chop. I knew I wanted to put something behind this hand and I love the Harlequin pattern. I just think it's beautiful. The black and cream, the black and tan, the black and white, especially if it's distressed. And this is from another piece of decoupage paper that I have. So we're gonna put that down first and then the hand on top of it. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this one. I think it did something for that weird little shape. This next project is a pretty simple one. I found this, well I had this basket, tray basket forever. I had it in my decor and then I stuck it with my other things. I found this piece at Big Lots. It was $2.99 plus they were having their 20% off day and I just loved the way that it looked. So I thought that I would upcycle this and make it a more substantial piece. So we're going to add it to this um, tray. We're going to be using some of these little blocks that I found in my stash to give it a base and so it'll stick to the uh, basket without having space in between this sign and the basket. I knew that I wanted the rim of this uh, basket tray to be contrasting with the piece that's going in the center. So I thought that I would use some DIY black wax and I did that, but I was not happy with it. So I went back over that with some of that folk art chalk paint in rich black and I loved, I loved that so much better. And the rule is you're not supposed to try to go back over wax with anything because it will beat up. However, the DIY black wax is very creamy and I just put it on and it mixed right in with that chalk paint. No problems, it dried perfect, no bubbling, no nothing. Okay, so look at the basket. I love that outer rim. And what I did was <laughs> I had that piece laying near where I was waxing and it got some wax on the cream. So I had to paint over that cream, which I thought actually made it look cooler than it was because now it has this like hazy, choppy painted look on it. So what was weird is this basket was level up closer to the top than it was the bottom. So I only needed the wood pieces 
on the bottom because it dipped in further. I don't know. Anyways, I used the wood glue and hot glue for the permanent and temporary hold. And then I glued, I think I did the same with the back of the sign. You all will have to let me know what you think about this one. I honestly didn't realize there was this many projects in this video until I'm doing this voiceover. It did take me a while to get it out, so I am sorry for that. I was so doing so good getting videos out every few days, but I'm working on it. This next one is another one of those little pre-painted jars. I thought that I would take some of the um, this little mushroom set and one of the butterflies out of this and give it kind of a dark and moody fall look. Not necessarily even dark and moody, even though this does fit in with that, but it just ended up so cute and it's so easy. And people love to buy these little jars with, a, with just something on them from my antique booths. So um, most of these projects, well, all of them are going to be, well, some of them are already have already went in my booth as of a few days ago, and some of them have already sold. So these are great for antique booths or just to sit around your house. Now, I did cut the bottom of that with a pair of scissors to make it uh, split more at the bottom to go on a rounded surface. Once I get this uh, dried, I'm going to go ahead and sand that bottom just a little bit where I had to uh, cut and put those pieces together so that it would fit on this rounded space. I go ahead around it and I seal it and then I grunge it up a little bit because that's kind of bright around the edge with either that dark wax or black wax or a usually stays on ink pad. I'll just take the pad around the edge add a ribbon and this one is done. Let me know what you think. This next project is just an honorable mention. I took an old bamboo cutting board that was worn out, added a piece of that decoupage paper, went around the edge with that black stays on ink and added one of those button Dollar Tree bows. I added a sawtooth hanger to the back and it's ready to be sold. Last but not least, we have a guest appearance of one of Royce's Actual Halloween decoupage papers isn't this gorgeous. It's a retro look watercolor. The artwork on this is by Lexi Grinzer. She does quite a bit of artwork for the recycled line. I had to include this because it's just adorable. It's not dark and moody, but I thought you all would enjoy just a little bit of whimsical fun. We're going to take the large piece of the candy corn we're gonna go ahead and put it on this tray, again, that I pre-painted. It was a very scratched up wood tray. I went ahead and pre-painted it with a bunch of my other pieces, as you've seen. Now we're gonna use that decoupage medium. We're gonna add this to it, and then we're gonna cut out the gorgeous owl and just put it right on top of this. Now you can do this however you want, but I just uh, glazed the whole piece, and then I wet my paper with a Mr. Bottle, and I just dove straight in. I put the whole piece down, took my little plastic baggie, and smoothed it all out, and you all, it turned out just great. There was a few little wrinkles around the edge, but that was where the paper, the um, wood board bows or curves, so that was to be expected. I cut my owl out, and then I went back over the top of this, put the owl down, and then decoupaged, or put the decoupage medium on top of the owl as well. I let that dry, sanded off all of my edges, and I did go around the edges with a black ink pad just to give it some contrast. I added a sawtooth hanger to the back, and this piece is just cute, adorable, whimsy with a touch of vintage Halloween. Let me know what you think about this one. I know that dark and moody and classic vintage is a wonderful style that I love on this channel, but occasionally I do a little cutesy. I want to thank everyone that has subscribed recently and thank you for the ones that are here from the beginning. I want to know if you guys want to see any more fall videos or do you want to just dive straight into Christmas. Of course, there'll be some of my regular videos in between. And if you're not subscribed, hit that button. Check out my Facebook and Instagram page. It's Cozy Junk Studio as well. And I will see you in the next video.